Well, I think this is about going to do it. Making my first casserole since after reading that article that Baptists live longer because they eat casseroles, I thought, might as well give it a try here and see what's going. Oh, hey, Calvary. Good morning. Good to have you here this morning. Well, we just had our first coffee house Friday night. It was a great success. Thank you, parents and adults, for coming and helping out. You get another try this coming Friday on the 9th at 10 o'clock in the evening or nighttime after the football game. Come on out to the second coffee house and be a blessing to these students. Well, it's the Labor Day holiday weekend and we're right in the middle of it. So just to remind you that tonight we will not be having any PM activities, nor will we have our worship service tonight so we can spend a little bit of time with the last holiday of the summer with our family and friends. And church office is closed on Monday because of the Labor Day holiday. Enjoy the holiday. Ladies, this Tuesday is the deadline for the women's retreat coming up on September 16th and 17th. So if you'd like to go, head on out to the Welcome Center, pick up one of those forms, fill it out, get it to the office on Tuesday so you'll meet that deadline. This Wednesday, September 7th, is our first Prayer Warrior Wednesday of the fall, so you want to make sure you come at 6.30. We'll be lifting up the harvest, praying for our farmers, our workers, and everybody involved in the harvest. So you come Wednesday, 6.30, and let's pray and praise up the harvest. Deacons, just a reminder, on September the 11th is Deacons meeting 4 o'clock, so you want to make sure your calendar is clear for that hour, and let's get together and talk about what's going on at Calvary. Also, right after worship uh, that evening on the 11th, we'll have in church council. That's at 7 o'clock. So if you're involved in the ministry team, you want to be at church council. And at that meeting, you might want to bring your budget that you've already been working on. That would be good to have that turned in real early so the finance team can start working on it. So if you're involved in a ministry team, get that budget and that team together. Get it turned in as soon as you can. All right, early service. Here's your last announcement. What an amazing way to start service is by watching a baptism. So take a look up here at the screen and you will be blessed. Have a great worship. Hey, good morning, Calvary. It's good to have you here this morning. There is no greater service than with the baptism. And we have got a young man, if he could be on fire right now, he would be. That's not to say he won't be later on, but he has been excited for the Lord since uh, his dad and him have been talking about it. And he accepted the Lord into his heart. And now Cash Crutcher comes in obedience to the command of his Lord Jesus Christ to show you outwardly what Jesus Christ is doing inwardly. So, Cash, come on down. All right, he is ready. Cash is here saying, and he's already been telling people in his school, on the bus, about baptism and about Jesus Christ. I think that's a challenge for all of us. So, Cash... In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in Him as Savior and Lord, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Everybody said, Hallelujah. Come on. Well, I think this is about going to do it. Let's all stand and greet everyone, greet one another. And as we start our worship, y'all might check your bikes. Yeah. I'll enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his gates with praise. I will enter his the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Okay. There's a preacher. There's that guy, that commercial making guy. Anytime you folks 
want to make a commercial at Calvary Baptist Church, you are welcome to come on board. <laughs> we got to keep it entertaining, those commercials. Yes, indeed. That way you'll remember them. But thanks for coming to worship on this Labor Day holiday weekend. Again, the last holiday of summer is kind of being escorted out the door in fall. Woo-wee. Did you hear some of them gunshots this morning? Oh, dove season is all on. So might want to stay away from the fields. But lots going on. Don't forget, ladies, the deadline is this Tuesday for the women's retreat coming up at the Plains Baptist Assembly. So fill out one of those forms out there. Turn them in by this Tuesday. Make sure you don't miss that opportunity as well. Lots going on. Lots happening. You have an opportunity to reach out to somebody with your words anywhere from inside the church to outside the church. So we want to challenge you to go and spread the gospel, and that's what it tells us to do. So check, take a look at your bulletin, see what's going on. Our website, it's always updated with information on there as well. Talk to your Sunday school class. A lot of things happen inside Sunday school. Hope you're going there as well. And thank you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. And one way we worship this morning, and that's through prayer. I don't know about you, but sometimes we just seem to hit that day and it's gone before we even thought about talking to the Lord. So that's got to be a first in our life. And we always challenge people to give God the first five minutes when you wake up. So this morning, I'm going to give you an opportunity to say a prayer. Maybe to yourself in the pew. You're welcome to do that. You're welcome to walk down this aisle and stand here with Kim and I. We'll lift you up and lift up the Lord. But however you want to do it, let's go before the Lord right now in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather today, we ask that you would uh, bless our service today. Bless Steve as he stands by before us to bring your word. Lord, thank you for the moisture that you have provided for us. Lord, we ask that you would bless our congregation today. Bless each family that's here. Those that are hurting and, and are, are needing your grace. And, and may they feel your spirit and your love. And, and may, it, may it be a, a blessing to them. Lord, we ask you to go with us throughout the rest of this week. Be with those that are, are here and, and keep us safe. Forgive us where we fail you. For us in Christ's name, amen. Amen. Oh, there's got to be at least one or two boys and girls here this morning. Come on down. Sarah, take it easy. Take it easy. That ankle's still healing up. Woo. That's okay. You all need to learn how, how Raiden does it. He just kind of... Take your time, Ray. Hey, guys, I've got a test. How many of y'all love taking tests at school? Oh, see? You guys all make A's, except Clay. <laughs> so here's a test. In this bag, I have some seeds. Can you tell me what the crop would be if you planted these seeds? Mikey? Um, you would have flowers. Flowers. That's a good thought. Sarah, you said ketchup. The ketchup carrots. seeds. Oh, carrot seeds. Carrot seeds, clay, cotton, cotton? Peanuts. peanuts. Hmm. This has many different names. Some would call it sorghum. Others would call it maize. Some would call it milo. So that's what that seed is. Here's a couple others. Now they're different colors. What color is this? Blue. What color is this? Green. Like blue. Like blue. Blue and green. So what seeds are these? What would you grow if you planted these? Flowers. Close. No. Nothing. Nothing. You'd plant these seeds and nothing would grow. That happens sometimes. These actually are cotton seeds. Okay? Cotton seeds. And they're different colors because they have different treatment on them. Some is Roundup Ready and some isn't. So, cotton seed. Now, I got a really, really hard one. What seed is this? How'd you... I, I believe they're peanuts because they look like peanuts. <laughs> now, you don't want to eat these because they're pink peanuts. 
And pink peanuts means they're raw and they're gooey. So anyways, what if you had 100 acres and planted one seed? Just one in 100 acres. Awkward. Awkward. You'd only have one little. Let me tell you what the Bible says real quick. It says this. Remember, whoever sows sparingly, that means little, will reap sparingly. But whoever sows generously will reap generously. You know what? When the Bible tells us to sow and we not, might not have seeds, but our words of Jesus are our seeds. And when we just say, hey, Jesus loves you, and we say it just one time, then we're only going to touch maybe one person. But if we tell a lot of people, hey, Jesus loves you, I'm praying for you, God bless you, and we tell a lot of people that, then our seeds are being sown to a lot of different people. And maybe the crop, the harvest, will bring those back to Jesus. So I encourage you, even though you don't have school tomorrow, mm, but Tuesday, I encourage you, I challenge you, to go and sow some seeds for Jesus and tell somebody that Jesus loves them, okay? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these boys and girls and the love they have for you, the excitement they have for life, Father, and may it be shared with others and especially your seeds of life be sown to others by these boys and girls. We ask in your name. Everybody said? Amen. All right. Let's all stand as we begin our worship.
join me with for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you just praise you for this beautiful day. I praise you for this group that's come together to worship you and to lift, lift your name on high. I ask, Father, that you just be with Brother Steve this morning. Give him the message that you'd have us to hear, and Father, just anoint us with your word. I ask, Lord, you'd go with us through this week, and Lord, just guide us always near to you. I pray that you'd forgive us where we fail you, and Lord, just teach us to be the servants you'd have us to be. Now, I just praise you and thank you and lift all these things up to you in Jesus' sweet and mighty name. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. All right. This is a song you're probably familiar with. I added a little twist to it myself. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat>
Hey, thank you, Rob. That was good. That was good. Hey, it's good to have you here on a holiday weekend. Have you ever watched the news? Just real quick, see who I'm talking to. The news. Read the newspaper. Somebody tell you some news. So you're informed. I heard on the news this week that that antibacterial soap, just a waste of money. It's no better than soap and hot water. And didn't you just take a step back and go, well, that's why. I knew something. You know, we're talking about the harvest, and we're just now beginning as fall is creeping in. In just a couple weeks, fall will actually be in season. You might even hint about it in the morning. You know it's coming. You've you've maybe seen the hint of some crops maturing out and farmers getting equipment ready. So we're going to take a journey on the harvest and And this morning, of course, as I left my remote way down here and I can't reach it unless it's in my hand. You know, it's so many times we have to realize the harvest cannot go on without the seed. Think about that. The seed, that that important bag I had over there, whether it's flowers, crops, fruits, vegetables. Anybody have any vegetables this summer? Vegetables. Mm, ah. Anyways, vegetables. So we're taking a journey of the harvest. And yet we can't really have a harvest unless there's been some seeds planted. And yet we always, I know this is a shock to you, but sometimes I've heard that we like to blame others or other things. Anybody ever heard of blaming something else? What's wrong with the seeds? I got a story, true story. He's an amazing pastor named Lee Strobel, pastor and author. He wrote a book, one of the books, called The Case of Faith. The Case of Faith. So let me ask you, has anybody ever heard the name Charles Templeton, minister, pastor, evangelist, Charles Templeton? I'm talking back in the early to late 40s to early 50s, Charles Templeton. Okay, what about his friend, Billy Graham? Oh, well, yeah. Billy Graham, yeah. Well, Charles Templeton kind of modeled his life after Billy Graham and and followed him and evangelized with him. And, and he became so passionate about that that Charles Templeton kind of branched off and started a church. And before long, that church had overflowed the building of over 1,200 people coming into the 40s and 50s, okay? He was such an amazing man for the Lord. Would it shock you if I told you that right now when, when Charles Templeton died, he was an atheist? He was. In his book, Farewell to God, that was his last book that he wrote. And remember, he walked and served with Billy Graham. He wrote a book, Farewell to God. This is why he said he became an atheist. Listen closely. Talking about the seed. He goes, it was a photograph in Life magazine that changed my life. It was a picture of an African woman. There, experiencing, they were experiencing a devastating drought. She was holding her dead baby in her arms and looking up to heaven with the most painful expression a human being had. He goes, I looked at that picture and thought this. Is it possible to believe that there is a loving, caring creator when all this woman needed was rain? How could a loving God do this to that woman? Who runs the rain? I don't, you don't, he does. Or that's what I thought. But when I saw that photograph, I immediately knew it is not possible for this to happen and for there to be a loving God. There was no way. Who else but a fiend could destroy a baby and virtually kill its mom in agony and all she needed was rain. Yeah, that's what it got me too. What's wrong with the seed? We love to blame other things, and that's what my talk is this morning to you. And so many times the question has come to me, if there is a God and He's all-powerful and He's good, then why is there such evil in this world? And understand this, it does go back to Adam and Eve. Because this is a fallen world. That's where it fell, right there. Before they sinned, 
It was a perfect world. But because of Adam and Eve and Satan and the apple, we know the story. That's when sin came in. But just, just think about this for a minute. In America, in America today, 45 people will be killed in alcohol-related deaths today. Six children will be abused or neglected every 60 seconds today. There will be a murder every 15 minutes and a robbery every 51 seconds in America. Well, if there's a good God, how can bad things happen? There must be something wrong with the seed. Let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with the seed. Nothing at all. If you have your Bible with you, we're going to read a story this morning about the seed. Maybe we'll get a little bit of enlightenment. I don't know. Maybe we won't. But in Matthew chapter 13 is where I'm going this morning. Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 24. I'll give you a second to get to that book in the New Testament there. And it's the parable of the weeds, which just happens to rhyme with seeds. And so I've got to ask you, are we sowers of seeds or sowers of weeds? That's the question today. If you have your Bible open, here we go in Matthew 13, 24. Jesus told them another, another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Good seed. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came. And sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? It's very important you remember that. An enemy did this. He replied, the servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up weeds, you may uproot wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters first, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Anybody ever have a weed grow in their yard? Anybody ever pull a weed and throw it in your neighbor's yard? Anybody have, just real quick, have mushrooms growing in your yard? If you want to see an amazing mushroom crop, go across Mary Jo Collins' house. She's got these little gnomes underneath there. No, she's got a crop of mushrooms, probably because we had a crop of rain lately. But those weeds, and I don't know about you, but I've never gone to the store and say, do you have any weed seed? I'm just saying. I've never had to. They have just abundantly grown on their own. Now, in the next service, when my daughter and son-in-law here, they were making Christmas trees out of their weeds. I mean, they were, they were going to spray paint them white, and God, they were just huge. And so here we are in this story about the, the, the weeds, and I think there's just a few questions we need to ask here. And the first question is, well, what's wrong with the seed? What's wrong with the seed? And of course, I got these seeds from a farmer, and I had to ask the non-farmer question to the farmer, how come those seeds are different colors? Well, one is Roundup Ready, which means it's, it's weed tolerant or, and it doesn't get as many weeds, and one isn't. And so if you plant the seed that's Roundup Ready and it can take all those, and you know, weeds come up. They come up during, during the growing process. And so I asked him, I said, well, how do I know that those seeds are clean? He goes, well, you don't know until you plant them. Am I close, Gary? They, they, they say... Some somewhere between 98 and 99% weed free. But there's that 1%. There's that 1% of weed in the seed. And I ask you, and I'll ask you over and over are you sowers of seeds or sowers of weeds? Because we know what we're supposed to be in good and bad, in up and down, in rain and drought, we are supposed to be sowers of seeds. The seed being his word to those who, who don't receive it. What's wrong with the seed? It's so easy to pull that question out. What's, well, what's wrong? Must be something wrong with that. Just a quick question. Anybody ever burn anything on the oven or in the oven or stove? You burn it? Well, it must not be set right. Surely that came through your head, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yeah. And I know nobody has ever been pulled over for speeding, but did you know what the speed? I, I didn't know it was that. I, must not be this right speed limit set here because I, I never speed, 
So that must have dropped somewhere between my wandering around while I was driving. And we've always got the excuses what I'm saying. So it can't be the seed. Well, I'm the sower of seed. Understand this. If you are the sower of seeds, then you have sin within your body. Because the Bible tells me that we were born into sin. I always love to tell you, there's no sin school. There's no sin college. You don't need to go to school to learn how to sin. It's within you. Look at Adam and Eve. It was within them. Nobody on this planet taught them how to sin. Satan came and tempted them, but they could have withstood the temptation, but they fell into temptation. That's why the Lord's prayer says, Do not lead me into temptation, but deliver me. And here we are. What's wrong with the seed? The argument is, if, there, if God has made everything, He's created everything, and evil exists... Well, then, it's naturally that God created evil, right? If God created everything, and God is the creator of all, and there's evil, then no, God did not create evil. In Genesis 1, 31, it says this, be very clear. God saw that all he had made, he saw it all, and he said this, and it was very good. Very good. He saw it all, he made it all, and he saw it, so God made creation good. Understand this, we are the ones who entered into this world and made creation bad. Sowing in the field of wheat is, is healthy and vibrant, but then evil comes in. So understand this, if, if God created everything and He created us, then evil came into this world through us, the sowers of seed. And I hate to say it, but, and it's, sometimes it's not acceptable when you say things that are true, but understand this, when we sow seeds, we also sow weeds. Just real quick, anybody ever utterance one single word that maybe not, might not have been uplifting to God? Maybe one utterance somewhere in your lifetime, you spewed something out that just wasn't glorifying God. Sure we have. We don't want to admit it because we're here on Sunday morning and we've got our Bible and we're all perfect and pristine. But let me tell you folks, we've all sinned. And sometimes it's through our words that we say that tell others, man, that's a weed that you're sowing. Instead of seeds of life. Paul says in Romans this. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. In this way death came to all men. Because, here it is, all sinned. All sin. As much as you want as a farmer to go get that seed and, may, and understand there's not a weed one. It says, well it's 99% clean but there's that one percent a few weeks ago i told everybody that we have that green goblin and he's inside of us and most of the time we keep them chained and locked down and boxed up but there are those times that the green goblin gets loose and we spew and we spray and those are weeds those are weeds now understand this you walk amongst the most perfect and pristine yard and i've got them all around my neighborhood except mine but they're gorgeous, but if you get down there, and there's, there's a little bitty weed in there. A little bitty weed that's trying to grow up to a big weed. And you've ever seen those weeds? Wayne and I were just talking about those weeds this morning. And sometimes that you get down to that base, and it's got a huge root, but they soak up all that moisture, and they're just dripping wet. And I tell you, that's what the weeds do in our lives. They, they soak the life out of us. What's wrong with the seeds? Honestly, nothing is wrong with the seeds. That'd be God's word. It's irrefutable. It's perfect. It's the weed within us that attaches to the seed that gets sown. There's an old expression out there that says, God chose to create the earth that we live on. But man chose to create the world that we live in. And in this world is where the mess is. In this world you will have trouble and those are weeds, but understand this, take heart. Jesus said, I've overcome the world. I, I created it, but you got in there and messed it up. Messed it up. Anybody ever not read instructions, directions, a formula, and you, you somehow, oops, don't know what I'm talking about? Well, I, I, I tend to want to. Kind of like that video commercial, I... 
I don't know what's in the casserole. I just know there's a whole lot of things in the casserole. And that article that Baptists live longer because they eat casseroles, because they say there are more nutrients in that casserole than just about anything else. But if you mess up and put the wrong thing in there or not enough of the right thing, you can easily tell that something is amiss here. And maybe you were baking something and, and in the rush forgot. Forgot one little, you know, I always say, what is it, just a take, just a little pinch. Why is that pinch so important? Because it is. Because it's important. If it wasn't important, it would not be in there. Lee Strobel went on to say in his book, the source of evil is not God's power. The source of evil is mankind's freedom. That, that hurts because it's on us again. We want to be sowers of seeds. We want to be out there spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, oh, you mess up my food order at the local restaurant. Woo-wee. Out come the weeds. Oh, man, you, you, you let my tea glass get down too low. Woo-wee. Out come the weeds. Isn't that true? Oh, you mess with my drink or my food, and it's on after that. You might be able to say something bad about my grandma. But you don't mess up my food order. And we'll find out truly how quickly we are sowers of weeds instead of seeds. God made creation and it was very good. But man introduced corruption and it's very bad. God made music. But we distorted music. This is pretty much a grown up group and God made intimacy between man and woman. And man distorted intimacy. And no longer believe it should be between man and woman. There's evil out there because we have allowed evil to infect the seed that we are supposed to be sowing. Our choices have created this fallen and corrupt world. There's no other reason it has fallen and is corrupted because of our choices. Adam and Eve chose to sin. Satan didn't bind them to the ground, pry their mouth open, and cram the apple down. He tempted them and they fell to temptation. Well, I know temptation is like, oh, I would never. And what do we say about never? Don't never say never. Oh, that temptation. I was talking to a gentleman, and he's an elderly gentleman, and I just love him, and he's always talking about his weight, his weight, his weight. And I said, so, you know, you're not supposed to eat after 8 o'clock because everything you eat turns to sugar and fat. And it just, he's like, yeah, yeah, I know. But I just can't help myself. You ever been there? Oh, he said, last night at 9 o'clock, he said, I was just walking around, had my hands in my pocket, I was doing good, and all of a sudden, he goes, some reason I heard this sound. It was coming from the freezer. You know where I'm going. He says, I don't know what it was, so I had to go check it out and open that freezer. And he goes, I don't know how that ice cream sandwich got in there, but it was not supposed to be, so I took care of it. And so it went from the freezer to my belly, he said. He goes, oh, I just knew that was wrong, but this is what got me. But it tasted so good. Isn't that how weeds are? Oh, that little weed ain't going to bother nothing. Don't worry about that little weed. And before you know it, that little weed is a Christmas tree. And it has killed all the grass and the seed and everything and anything. And it is spreading other seeds and other weeds. And that's where we're at. And so as the Bible story said, why don't you send us out there and pull them up? Have you ever pulled up a big weed? A whole lot of dirt comes up with it. Whole lot of dirt, whole lot of destruction. Just, he says, you know, why, why don't we just go pull up the weeds? If we see the problem, let's fix it. And if there's a good and loving God out there, and he can do anything, and it, just a thought of it, why doesn't he eliminate all sin? Well, hear me clearly. God can eliminate all sin, and one day, he will. It might be today. I don't know. But one day he will eliminate all sin. But until that day, we need to be sowers of seeds and not weeds. What's wrong with the seed? The answer is nothing. It's the weed that we attach to the seed that causes the problem. In Romans, I'm sorry, I already read that one before I pulled it up there. I guess I got ahead of myself. But in Mark chapter 13... Mark 13, there's another story here. It's on the front of your order of service if you haven't caught that also. It says, therefore, keep watch. 
because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether at evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone. I hope you remember, if nothing else today, watch. Watch. I, I believe farmers go out there and literally walk through their fields, drive down the turn rows. They're watching the crop. If you gardeners are here, you get it out amongst the middle of your garden and you check things, see if there's little vermin been out there, if they've been digging in, if there's some some disease and pestilence out there. You're watching your crop. Understand this, you sowers of seeds. Don't just scatter aimlessly and then walk away. I believe you've driven out there. You've sat, you've looked, you've touched. So many times we think, well, that's good. I went to church and I said, well, God bless you. And I threw some seed out there and that's good enough for me. It's not. Watch. Get out there and look at that crop and see what's going on in there. Parents, grandparents, get out of here. Go, go outside. You ever, you ever said those words? You drive me crazy. Get outside for a little. Get. But what did you end up doing? You watched them. Folks, let me just tell you, I think we are in the business of giving up. Because we'll sow the seeds... Good enough, it's out there. It's on them now. Instead of watching. Watching where those seeds have fallen. Maybe they need a little extra water. Maybe they need a little extra word of encouragement, a little sunshine on them. But so many times, like, yep, yeah, it's on them now. I don't know how many times I've heard that as Christians. They know it's on them. Had some devastating loss of, loss of life this week, and it's been tough. Families are searching. Searching and understand this, God ain't hiding. He's always been and always will be right there for you and for me. There's an abundance of seeds to sow, and every one of us here might, might even be saying, I'm not in that business. Oh, yes, you are. You are in the seed sowing or the weed sowing business, one or the other. Now, you might, as I do, you might have Paquito Jesus with you. Or you might have them around your neck or on your finger or on the bumper sticker, trust in God, blah, blah, in God we trust. And you think that's good enough, but it's not. Every single day you, you put your feet on this planet and walk. There's a reason. It's called work. I think we sang about that. We're going to work till, till I retire. No. There is no Christian retirement I'm going to work till Jesus comes. Last true story this morning, also from Lee Strobel's. Tells a story about a guy named Charles Murray. Back in 1967, Charles Murray was a student at the University of Cincinnati. He was a, a platform diving specialist going to the Olympics. Charles Murray, 1967. I was a little kid then. Some of y'all might not have been. Some of you might not have been on the planet. But he was really diligent. But Charles Murray was two things. A non-believer and had never darkened the doorstep of a church ever in his life. Now some of us are going, what? That doesn't. It happens every single day. He was not only a non-believer. He never darkened the doorstep until one semester God brought into his life another diving partner that was a Christian and before they dove he would be over there praying because he, he told Charles I know you're a non-believer I don't want to force my belief I'm just going to pray I'm going to not pray because you don't want me to I'm going to pray and if you want to join me you're welcome so Charles Murray asked him, well, tell me about this God that you pray to. And throughout the semester of swimming and diving and platform diving, 20-something feet up in the air, Charles's partner would tell him about Jesus and about God, and about how much he loved him, and how much he desired that God would come into his life and change his life forever. Well, one night, Charles Murray was behind on everything. His classes were long, so he went at night to the to the college swimming pool to practice diving. 
But the, the swimming pool had this glass ceiling, and it was a full moon, and he just couldn't find the light system to turn on because it was very complicated. So I can still see the diving board. I can still see the pool. I'm good. So he climbs up there, and as the full moon beams through the glass, Charles Smith turns around and stretches his arm to do the first dive, and he said the reflection from the moon through his back formed the shape of a cross. And at that moment in his life, Charles Murray said, I started weeping. I realized how real God was. And I sat down on that platform 20 feet up in the air, and I said, Jesus, come into my life. Make my life, the rest of it, different than it has ever been. He said he sat there weeping on top of that platform 20 feet up in the air. He said just a few minutes later, he heard the door slam, and he looked down at the door, and there was the janitor, and the janitor had found the light system and flipped the lights on. To Charles' surprise, as he saw the janitor in the pool, there was no water in the pool. It had been drained for maintenance. As he stood on that platform with his arm and about ready to jump off into oblivion and, and certain hell, he saw Jesus instead. The sower of seeds through a shadow changed a man's life. There's so many people here that say, I, I can't talk to people. Jesus didn't talk to him. Jesus showed him through a shadow, a seed of life. And there are so many people here that say, but I'm afraid. Understand this. Fear not. For Jesus said, I am with you always. Now, Charles Smith, he said this. I, Charles Murray said this. I, I didn't deserve heaven, but I surely accepted it. Because as I saw my shadow in the shape of the cross, Jesus reminded me that no matter what I say, he was still with me always. No matter what you've ever done or ever said or ever haven't said or ever haven't done, Jesus said, I'm with you. The question is, are we with him? Are we with him? So many times we say, I went to church, so I must be with him. I came down front and I said a prayer. I must be with him. I held a Bible I gave to the church. All that is well and good, but the question is, did you accept him as Savior and Lord? Did you utter those words, Jesus, come into my life? Church, a whole month on hell is what it was about now. There's a whole big harvest out there. A whole big harvest. And there are people right here in the confines of our boundaries called our, our city limits or our territory or our county that would die today and go and, and kick the gates of hell wide open. And I say those words because I was talking to a brother this week and he was telling me about a friend of his. And of course the words, shirt off your back, last dollar out of his pocket, would drive in a, in a rain, raging storm and carry the umbrella so you could go take out your trash. That kind of guy. And he said, hey, man, you're just a wonderful guy. Man, Tell me about your story about Jesus. And, the, and his friend looked at him and said, I can't tell you. He goes, so tell me if you were to die today, you'd go to, he goes, I'd kick the gates of hell wide open. But he was a good man. He'd done good things. Never harmed his neighbor. Kind of reminds you that good people go to hell every day. Just because you're good doesn't mean you get to God. The only way to get to God is through His Son, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And here we are today. Jesus said, I say to you and I say to everyone, watch. He's coming back, church. He's coming back. I wonder why we're so lackadaisical about his second coming. That's where we're at. Yet some people think, well, how can there be a God in so much turmoil? Let me wrap up real quick. This, this world is just in more chaos than ever before. He must not be real, or he must not be as powerful, or he just doesn't care. Many of you heard the story about the barber and the Christian, but I'll tell it again. The Christian went into the barber shop back in the day. You remember the barber shop? Barbershop, foam, warm towel, straight razor. Mmm, that feels good. And so the Christian went in there and he sits down to the barber and, you know, and they have a little talking. And the barber says, this, I can't believe in the God that you serve. I can't believe in his love because look at this world. 
A God of love would never permit poverty and disease and this world that's in such chaos. I can't believe the God that you serve would allow this to happen. Of course, the minister was quite speechless, and he sat there for a moment like, God, please, just give me the word. About a minute later, a homeless man walks by the barber shop. Long, stringy, nasty hair, long, matted beard. So the minister had a good thought. And he looks to the barber, and he says this, I, I can't believe you're such a terrible barber. The barber said, what do you mean? He goes, look at that man right there. I can't believe that you're such a terrible barber. A good barber wouldn't permit a man like that to look like that. A good barber would take care of business, would give him a haircut and a clean shave. To which the barber replied, well, you can't blame me for his appearance. He never came into my shop. To which the minister replied, don't blame God for allowing this world to go to hell. Because those people never came into his house. We are the house of God. We are the seed, sower of seeds. So I ask you as I close this morning. Are you? Are you sowing his seeds of salvation? Or are you sowing weeds of worry, of want, of woes? You have the ability to be a sower of seeds today right out these doors, maybe right inside this church to somebody who needs to hear about God's love. Now you can sow seeds or you can sow weeds, but there's nothing wrong with the seed. Would you stand with me, please? Father, there are people here right within our arm's reach, maybe, that they've never been into the house of the Lord that says, I love you, Jesus. Come into my life. The story of, of the barber and, and the Christian is a painful one. Because there are people walking by us who have good seeds to sow every day. And yet they might hear weeds from us. So Father, this morning, let us take a look within ourselves. Are we sowers of seeds? Or are we sowers of weeds? Because the seed that we have, is, it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it, Father. But our actions might not be lining up with our words. Oh, we can come to church and still live like hell. That's not what it's about. If we come to church and we believe in Jesus Christ, then our life has to be different than the world. So, Father, as we sing a hymn of invitation, I'm stepped to the side. This, this whole area is open for anybody who would come to you. And so, Father, you touch these lives. You remind them there's many seeds to be sown. So let's put down the weeds and let's pick up the seeds. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I 
I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Every church there's a whole world out there let them sing there's a God that loves you there's a God of redeeming out there you've got those seeds do you really want someone to go to hell you have that opportunity to sow a seed in their life so let's do that the ushers are going to come they're going to sing one more verse you come right now First off, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done for us. We do thank you for the rain, Lord. We thank you for, for everything. Because without you, we're nothing. We ask you bless this offering, which is just a small portion of, of what you've given to us. And we thank you and ask you we go for this week. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 